there has already been a truly bountiful harvest for new metal this year. And one of my favorites so far in this very stacked year has been Victory Over the Sun's amazing follow-up to my favorite album from 2021. I've been wanting to do a video about this band since I first heard Nowhere two years ago, and I've been in contact with Vivian and tried without success to find an angle that seems manageable until now. The problem is that Nowhere was written with microtonal guitars that Vivian herself built that divided the octave into 17 equal parts, and I kept floundering trying to find a way to talk about the album in detail without being able to really notate it or play it myself. I haven't given up on that project, but in the meantime, the new album has arrived, and it's sparkling and deep and heavy and really, really good, and it's also in good old 12 equal divisions of the octave tuning temperament, uh, so I can play it, which makes it much easier for me to talk about. So let's spend some quality time with the dazzling first two riffs of the first track, Thorn Woos the Wound. So I'm going to talk about rhythm for the opening burst section and then harmony for the pretty black metal riff that comes right after. This first section is a classic burst section where we get a long string of hits that are the same in every instrument and it's tricky to hear how everyone is staying synchronized. Vivian sent me her handwritten tabs for this which show that the section is built on this cool ascending thing where the guitar on the left plays a B power chord. Uh, and the guitar on the right moves an 027 shape up the fretboard several times. But she didn't write out the rhythms, which meant I had some sleuthing to do. I have another video collecting and talking about a bunch of examples of this sort of burst section, with the idea being that in most cases there's a simple underlying tactus that the band is hiding from you, but if you can figure it out it makes it much easier to hear the bursts, um, maybe as you know syncopations or whatever against this, this beat. And you can do that here as it turns out, uh, but it's I'm not sure that's actually the most intuitive way of hearing it, and there are a couple complications that I'll talk about. So I'll lead with the answer. Basically, we get a string of four of the same durations to start the section, and the question is what rhythmic value these are relative to the, the hidden tactus. It would be very easy to feel these as the tactus, especially considering that they are the same as what becomes the tactus in the, the next section in the black metal riff. However, this doesn't really work because then the length of the held fifth note wouldn't line up with the, the, that tactus. So, you know, you'd be syncopating right from the start, which, uh, yeah, overall it just doesn't line up as nicely if you try and follow that, that tactus all the way through. So instead, I realized that these first four durations are a dotted quarter note. That is, we can subdivide this duration into three equal parts and then use four of those, dura those subdivisions to build the half note tactus, which fits nicely with both the first four attacks and the long held notes. And as it turns out, we can continue this half note tactus throughout the whole first section, and it lines up with at least the edges of where the pitches change.
this is probably the smoothest way to learn it or to learn to hear it once you can get it down. You can get really dialed in uh, if you can hear a steady taxis and everything else becomes, you know, stuff that dances around the beat and, you know, often lands on it so you can kind of reinforce it. But this isn't how I originally heard it and I'm not even sure it's actually the easiest in this case. The other option is to hear a changing hidden tactus, one that switches between the dotted quarter and the half note so that each string of attacks starts on a beat. There are a couple different subsections of this first riff with some repetitive chunks in between, so that the basic rhythmic structure of the whole thing is A A A prime, B B C C C prime. For the A sections, I think it's pretty easy to hear the tactus either way. But for the B sections in particular, I think it might actually be easier to hear a changing tactus, which would sound like this. This kind of comes down to the difference between thinking divisively with rhythm, so thinking that you have a big beat and it's subdivided and everything is landing on that grid, versus thinking additively where you, you think uh, you learn to hear uh, strings of normally threes and twos or threes and fours without any, any necessary conception of like a bigger unit. The nice thing about taking the additive approach in this, uh, in the B sections, is that they make it so that you start each of the, the strings of shorter attacks on a beat. Whereas if you stick with the, uh, the, the bigger beat, the half note tactus, um, you will have to start some of those strings on an off beat. So in theory, there's no reason that you would have to have a steady hidden tactus. So maybe thinking of this additively makes some parts of it easier. And that's kind of like an extra layer of trickery where it's like it's making it so that you're looking for something that is maybe like a wild goose chase if you're if you're trying to feel that bigger beat. But I should say that actually after I took the time to, to record this and once I learned it well enough to, to be recording it, I I'm pretty sold on the the bigger the bigger beat. I think it's it does make things a lot simpler. So that's rhythm in the, the first section, which is super cool, super slippery, um, because there's until the very end of this this burst section, there's absolutely no information about the provided by the drums about what the this hidden tactus is. But I think I might have figured it out, and it completely transforms it this this section from this kind of surprising uh, thing where you're like there are these you're trying to like count and and feel your way through it, and it turns it instead into this like super groovy kind of you know just figuring out this tactus makes it go from being kind of paralyzing in the sense of like where where's i don't know where i am where's the next the next hit coming from to being like very movable and groovable baby and while i was editing this i realized that i neglected to say the kind of most important cool thing about this which is that the tact the hidden tactus is never actually revealed, which makes it unusual and, and uh, like kind of arcane and esoteric feeling. Like the by the time the the drums really come in with the blast beat, it's doing that dotted quarter tactus, which is not the tactus that rationalizes the whole first section. So it's like the the hidden tactus is is only there kind of in in our imaginations, and then by the time we hear a an actual actually stated tactus in the drums it has changed to something else which i think is really cool so that's that's the first section and you know what let's uh, dip our toes into how harmony works in the very pretty first riff after the intro <laughs> Chord progression is definitely tonal, but it's not entirely simple. From a zoomed out horizontal perspective, it goes from 1 to 5 to 3 to 5 and circles back. But the turnarounds it uses as dominance are these really cool voice leading constructions that sound simultaneously outside and very directional. 
in the first half of the phrase, there's this cool transformation of the 5-7 chord into a diminished triad on its way to a chromatic stepwise transformation into the minor 6 chord. And then on the turnaround in the second half of the phrase, there's this really cool double chromatic neighbor chord leading back to 1. And just in general, the voice leading is really economical and elegant in this whole riff. And I love how it feels like we like sidestep into each new chord, sometimes by way of strange liminal intermediate worlds. got to check out this whole album, which is both huge and intimate and also endlessly inventive and does something I love where each song takes you to a bunch of different places and is also kind of its own self-contained, unique world. It is great to be here together with you all again on the internet. See ya.